guest, um, but thank you for joining um, the ART webinar. My name is Chandler Kuhn. I'm the International Admission Counselor at Marietta College. Um, and joining me here today is Sarah Rosenstock. She is a part of the ART department. She's a professor. Um, and if you would like to introduce yourself a little bit. Yeah. So my, as um, Chandler said, my name is Sarah Rosenstock. So I am the chair of the art department and I'm also one of the primary graphic design professors. Uh, so the art department has uh, two majors. We have graphic design and we have art. And within art, there are two concentrations. There is a studio um, art realm, which there is a concentration that has drawing, painting, and printmaking, and then digital art, which is digital, digital illustration, video, and photography. And then we have um, three minors. So we have um, um, actually several, four minors. So digital art, studio art, graphic design and art history, and then two certificates in art or uh, digital art. Okay, and before we ask any other questions, I did see some attendees just kind of pop in. So um, just like I said before, if you have any questions, we have a Q&A bubble at the very bottom um, and you can ask those questions there and then we will get them asked. Um, so we do to just have a one question come in. Um, so what are some ways the students engage with the department um, outside of the classroom and how do students and faculty have fun? Yeah, so in general, like in, in any small school, um, you don't just engage in the classroom because we're around all the time. So one of the lovely things is that we um, are housed on the top floor of Herman Fine Arts Center. And so our doors are open, our offices are open. So when we're not in class, we're usually in our office and people are constantly walking by, we're walking by and engaging in that way. Um, so students are just, you know, see us, they wanna chat, um, we're walking across campus, getting a cup of coffee, we're in line next to students, you know, you're always engaging on that um, level, which is really lovely. You're not really isolated in a, in a silo in that sense. Um, and we, and, and because of that, we often uh, see our, our students in different um, capacities, whether they're in a different uh, a show in the theater department or on the field as an athlete, you know, we attend those type of events as well because we're a small um, close knit community. Um, there's also special circumstances in which we have we host uh, art exhibitions or visiting artists in which um, it is a more of a formal occasion that we have catered and we have attendees from the community um, as well as the campus and the students would um, engage with us there as well. Um, I myself own a small business in downtown uh, Marietta and every first Friday of every month uh, we host an event all of the many of the downtown shops um, stay open later and host events usually we have live music in our um, shop and so that's often a time in which my colleagues um, in and outside of the department um, come and visit and listen to music and chat um, as well as students often I get students who have um, parents who are visiting, you know, come in or they want to bring their friends to come in and see our shop um, and that well, that way. And one of the things too is like, um, it's not just like those formal occasions that you can have fun. Um, a lot of memories are made of just students working, you know, evenings and weekends in the lab and studio together because, you know, that's where the materials are and it's easier to draw in the studio than it is in your dorm room or work in the computer lab. So you're around a lot of people, you are, you know, getting feedback from each other, um, you're laughing, you know, you're watching movies on the projector while you're working, you know, a lot of those memories um, uh, happen at that time too. So there's a variety of times in which we just more naturally uh, coalesce all together and then sometimes the students are having fun on their own and, and faculty are in different realms. I was going to actually piggyback on that question and uh, are there any clubs or organizations that uh, you see a lot of your art students kind of being a part of on campus? Yeah, so we have the Art Honorary Society Kappa Pi in which um, we do have students who have a certain GPA and a certain amount of credits that they fulfilled within the art department that they're eligible for and so Kappa Pi Pi often hosts things like um, Halloween parties, um, as well as they go on field trips to museums and galleries and such. Um, also, we have um, 
students often have design students who might participate in the um, AAF, the Advertising American Advertising Federation Club. Um, in the communication department, they house Fifth Street Consulting, which is not necessarily a club, but it's kind of in that sense of community in which students for credit can participate in um, kind of a real world setting um, in which they're working with clients um, and they're working on projects. So they're usually, you know, designing certain projects for these clients and learning how they go through that. So they build a cohort um, on different semesters within that realm um, as well. So that's often where they um, combine within that kind of club setting um, in a more traditional manner. Okay, thank you. Um, so how are, okay, here's a question. How are your classes run, being run during COVID-19? So uh, <laughs> one thing about uh, being in a creative field is we're pretty used to creative thinking and creative problem solving. Um, and so we've just had to apply that to our curriculum and our classes. So for example, um, my, one of my final projects for typography is um, we have to use a, a photocopy stand, which means that it's like a, a stand that a camera is mounted to so it's parallel to the surface and able to capture a photo because they're making um, letter forms out of found materials. Uh, so we didn't have access to that, nor like these fancy cameras. So I figured out a way to make a copy stand out of a cardboard box, which most people have in their house right now, <laughs> if it's Amazon boxes or whatever, and then just using their smartphone. So like doing that type of stuff, like trying to think about like, um, I guess it's a little bit of Apollo 13 aspect of like, what are the materials we have on hand and how can we use them to our advantage? Um, so that's what a lot of our classes have gone about of like figuring out, well, what kind of materials do we know that every student probably has? You know, pencils may not have charcoal, but they probably have pencils or we're just flexible with what type of materials they use and we still kind of accomplish the same goal that assignment might have or the objective of the curriculum at that stage. Um, so it might be um, just uh, you know, using even the COVID-19 um, as the theme for a project, you know, whether it be like a meme project or whatever, in which using it as a theme, then not only we're practicing a skill, but also sharpening the dialogue that students are having and how they're processing this whole event is like, okay, let's, let's have some fun with this and figure out, you know, um, what, how we'd use our time and such. So, so it's been quite lovely to see how my colleagues have um, really kind of stretched uh, their imagination in that sense. And we've been solely um, promoting that on our Instagram page for the art department just to share the cool stuff that our students are making from their, their homes. Yeah, and it um, really goes to show the adaptability of the departments and the college itself, um, just how quick of a turnaround this whole um, virtual college turned into. So it's really fascinating. Yeah. Obviously. Yeah. Um, and so as much as it has creative we want, we still want to see our students in person. <laughs> <You yeah. know? laughs> Always. Yeah. Um, so next question are what are some internships or experiential learning opportunities um, available to students in the department? Yeah, so um, this kind of falls into a variety of categories. So um, we have, um, for example, graphic design students um, always participate in an internship. In fact, they have a class that helps prepare their materials to apply for an internship. So they're not just kind of, you know, sent out and been like, figure it out. You know, we actually help them um, make those, those materials and coordinate um, with myself as an internship coordinator, as well as the Career Center to find an internship and find one that fits um, the, the goals. And usually a student, um, bare minimum, participates in an internship um, once in their time at Marietta College, if not more than once. And they often have um, jobs on campus that kind of fulfill that um, requirement as well. So that gives them more thing um, items on their resume that allow them to get an even better internship outside of school. Um, so that's something that the graphic design students all are required to do. Um, for the studio art majors, um, 
they have opportunities that are really more specialized to what their goals are. So if you have somebody who's interested in art therapy or working in a gallery, we kind of work with them more individually and like getting them um, to job shadow and men get mentors in that sense. And in a more formal setting, um, for the past couple years, um, we have been running a summer fellowship program in which um, rising seniors that are majors, they might be either studio art majors or graphic design majors, um, apply for this fellowship that can fund up to $1,400 in um, a educational experience over the summer that will inform their senior year, primarily their senior capstone project. So the past two years we have sent um, two young women studio art majors to New York City um, for experiences um, for workshops that are either at the New York Studio School or School of Visual Arts. And so these are programs that they actually need to apply to with a portfolio and be accepted into. And so they were accepted and then they were funded to go to these experiences. One of these students had never even been on a plane um, before, much less been in New York City. She'd only been to Myrtle Beach and then Ohio. So it was quite an eye-opening event. And we had alumni um, meeting her in New York City, showing her around, mentoring her while she was there. So she wasn't necessarily complete fish out of water. Um, so that was really a life-changing and pivotal event for these students. So every year we're still giving out these fellowship, um, these fellowship programs and, um, and funding. Um, for students as well. So that's something that they all have access to when they can apply. And then there's inherently a lot of service learning projects. So these are projects that um, we're actually doing for the community um, built, into, um, built into our curriculum. So this might be we're working with a nonprofit um, and such um, that or classes that have real world clients. So that's usually in the graphic design um, classes that we have real world clients that they're working on, but also the painting classes work with um, residents of the Senior Citizen Center in which students are painting portraits based off of stories they hear from individuals at the Senior Center. So they're working one-on-one -on -one with these. So there's a variety of different experiences that we get to do because we are um, this small community that allows us to have a lot of flexibility and we, because we don't have so many things we have to keep track of and so many people, we really can um, specialize and make experiences really unique to the students' needs and their objectives. Thank you. Um, okay, so on the post-grad side of this question, um, what are some jobs that graduates in the art department have um, obtained? Yeah, so the, um, again, because luckily, you know, we have a smaller department, a smaller school, we really can focus a lot on helping our students get jobs um, coming out of school. So um, it really can vary depending on everybody's goals. I would say that there are studio art majors that um, really just want to practice as artists and don't want to necessarily get a job within the art field. So they might have different goals. Um, often studio art majors double major in another um, topic that they might necessarily, they might pursue that. So for example, we had a chemistry and studio art double major um, in which he worked in both fields and then eventually went to graduate school for um, chemistry, chemical engineering. And then we have people who are um, gallery directors, um, art instructors. Um, so they're teaching um, art um, and practicing um, art as well. Um, so they might have active studios and such. And so that's a less of a formal um, profession in a sense, you know, you don't, you don't necessarily have a name tag says, hey, artists kind of thing. Um, but in a formal, um, in a formal way, we have um, people who are um, working with nonprofit organizations um, as artists who might be using the skills of visual communication as artists in a, in a way that they might be an education director for a nonprofit in which you're using those visual um, communication skills within that in a, and in that setting, but as well as all the other skills they've learned in their other courses at Marietta College. Um, in design, we have a very high placement um, profile for the students who are getting um, jobs within the design field. And so it it's usually they're just looking what type of design um, uh, job that they want and what location they want. Um, usually the Marietta, the surrounding area isn't very saturated with um, 
with designers. So there's usually more jobs than there are design students. I get asked, you know, to to send pro scenes around. So they might be art directors for, you know, woodcraft. Um, they might be um, marketing directors for, you know, a bank, um, all that type of thing. Um, on Friday, I recently had um, a portfolio review with alumni with our seniors. Um, so one of them is um, a, a creative director for the Ohio um, Attorney um, General's office. So that's something she is working. So she, all the materials that is used in the office. We have a student who um, is the uh, proposals designer for Sotheby's auction house in New York City. Um, we have people who are working with an interaction design, user experience design, product design, uh, apparel design, a variety of things. So we really kind of create a foundation in which students, when they graduate, they kind of find what their niche is and where they want to go with that. Um, and that might go a variety of directions, but they have a good foundation to, to be able to pursue whatever is um, interests them at that time. Yeah, and which also kind of increases like the level of networking that a student can do with all of that all yeah that alumni program well that's what the thing is is when you're in a small school you know you're like you inherently being a marietta college graduate is more special because there's less of us um that are that graduate or less of these students who graduate from it so um when i have these these alumni that are um participating in our portfolio review traditionally every year I always get more alumni who want to participate than I actually need um, because they remember what it was like. They want to help. They want to like talk to, they get really excited um, about it. And so it's really a fantastic experience for these students to be able to engage on that level um, and have that sense of mentorship from these um, people that are part of the long blue line. Okay, so next question. What does Marietta College offer in this area um, that is different from other colleges and programs? Well, I think that um, one thing to always remember as a prospective student and when you're searching for colleges is that um, there are just as many things that are unique that there are that are the same. But there are things that you can't replicate and that's usually the people. So, um, you know, that's one aspect that when we actually, um, when you have a rapport with your faculty, that's something that you really can't replicate. So when you visit a school, which is really important, and if you can't visit and you have to do it virtually, to have just that video chat, some sort of engagement, you'll be able to tell if you can engage with your instructors, because that's really important. Especially if you're looking for a small school um, and especially a liberal arts school, you want to make sure that you can have a rapport with your instructors. Um, that's, that's the most important thing. As someone who had an undergraduate career in, um, a, at a liberal arts institution and then a graduate career in um, a large um, state-driven institution, I can kind of compare and contrast the two things. And especially for someone who works within a vocation, um, as graphic design would be kind of considered a vocation and a liberal arts institution that is not necessarily considered a vocational in that sense. I love getting to teach people the power of visual communication and understanding that it is a skill set just like verbal uh, communication and written communication. And that's something that we really emphasize within the department and any institution, especially a liberal arts institution that emphasizes that foundation um, within the liberal arts realm is that creating a foundational pivot foot. So just like in basketball, you have to plant that foot so you can reach in a variety of directions. That's what the education that you receive here gives you. Um, so the graphic design program, the studio art program, while you may not have spent your four years taking 25 different art and design classes, those classes that you were taking while you're at Marietta College prepare you for things beyond just being an artist and designer. Um, they're preparing you to be critical thinkers. They're preparing you to be creative problem solvers. They're preparing you to be good communicators, being empathizers, things that you can't outsource, okay? You can't you need context in order to understand 
uh, how we communicate with each other. And you can't get that if you're not within that environment. So that's why when I say you can't outsource that, it's like you have to be in it to have the context to be able to communicate that. Um, and so these are all things that I really pride our, myself and my team and having these graduates that they can really, they feel prepared in order to pursue that kind of niche area that they're interested in. They're like, I'm going to try this for a little while and I'm going to try that for a little while. And then I'm going to figure out in between what I want to do. And being a Marietta College graduate, I agree 100%. Um, just the opportunities, um, you're, you literally have so many opportunities kind of thrown at you. Sometimes you have to kind of pick and choose which opportunities. Yeah, too <laughs> many opportunities. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay, just a reminder for all the attendees, if you do want to ask any questions, the Q&A at the bottom, um, just go to that, click it, and then you can ask your questions right there. Um, next question is from a work study standpoint. Um, we do have a, a lot of students who are work study eligible. So, um, are there any opportunities within the art department, um, that could provide some extra experience for a student majoring? In yeah. That? So, um, one of the main things that every semester we have is we have, um, right now it's called the print center and it's going to be remodeled. Um, when we're having this big fancy center called the design center, the Dean Design Center will now have, in this place we have um, printers, we have um, a laser cutter, we have vinyl cutters, um, and then we have photography equipment, all things that students have access to. Um, so this is something that we have student employees that um, facilitate this for students in which they're printing things on high quality photo printers, or they're checking out equipment for students um, to borrow mostly photo equipment, um, some like different tablets and things like that. And so that's something every semester we need students who do, who work within that realm. So they not only get experience um, working, just working in the department um, on that aspect, but then also they learn how to um, work the equipment. So it's a skill set that actually is transferable to other different types of businesses. Um, and then we also are always looking for studio um, studio helpers. So these are people who are like need more of a flexible schedule in which they're helping us set up, take down, still lives, things like that. Um, and then we all, um, usually have a student designer. So they actually design um, in-house materials during the semester as well. So these are all different work study opportunities. Okay, thank you. Um, okay, do I have to have my own computer for this um, major? Yeah, so that, um, I'm glad it was asked because one of the common questions that students ask is, do I need, for especially design students, do I need my own computer and do I need the design software? And we don't require that for students. We have a computer lab in which students have access to 24 seven when there's no um, class in there. And there's also computers in the, um, in the library, Macintosh computers that have the software on that too. So even if there is class, they can work in the library during that time. Eventually, if there's people who are majors in the department, they eventually prefer to have their own computer just so they can work, um, you know, in the comfort of their pajamas at um, in their dorm room. But it's not a requirement by any means to do that or to have that. Okay. Um, is a portfolio required? A portfolio is not required to um, be accepted into the program. However, if you have a portfolio and you want to apply for our talent scholarship, um, we do have a talent scholarship that you need to submit a portfolio with certain parameters um, in that um, to apply for that. And that is about up to $3,500 that renews annually as long as you have either a major minor certificate within the department that you maintained um, and information on that is available um, within the art department website um, on the marietta.edu. Okay. Um, another question, what do you enjoy most about teaching at Marietta College? I think I touched on it a little bit about um, the power of visual communication as a skill set. Um, so one thing that I really love is obviously I love my majors and I love my graphic design students, um, but I also really love teaching students who aren't 
design majors or aren't design minors have never taken a design class and teaching them how they can use visual communication skills to enhance their communication um, with their peers and their audience. So understanding that the origin of our communication, while we originally oral storytellers, eventually we started making cave paintings, which is the origin of visual communication. And eventually those drawings became little letter forms, which eventually evolved into our written communication um, for those, those icons in a sense. Um, and then the time of globalization in which we can't necessarily assume everybody speaks the same language, visual communication is really important. So when we think about uh, when we are have to use the restroom and like, how do we find which room is the restroom? We see that little man or woman next to it and we're like, that communicates to us, you know? Same thing with stairs and exits and all these different things that we don't realize are visual cues. And someone designed those things. Someone made a decision of what would help communicate that in the most effective manner. And so when I can empower my students with that power, that superpower as it may be, and, um, and learn how they can make certain decisions to make their data or their research sing or communicate more effectively or make someone actually engaged in the content um, is a pretty powerful thing and something I really enjoy. Yeah. Um, okay, so I'm going to ask one more time um, if any attendees want to ask any additional questions. Uh, now is a great time to do so, um, just at the Q&A bubble. And we'll give uh, some time for that. What is your favorite place on campus? Uh, I, I like that there's a round, Prince Forum in the library, which is right next to the cafe, is this little round room that's covered in windows. And so whenever I have um, a presenter coming to class that they don't need a computer or if it's just like a conversation, I always try to um, reserve that room because it's just such a nice space um, to have just a conversation because you kind of look out the windows, especially in the winter time. Um, I really enjoy that room. And a lot of natural lighting as well. Yeah, a lot of natural light. I have a lot of memories of, I use that room when um, our, our, our students, design students, always um, design the annual holiday cards for the president's office and they do their presentations to the president and the um, provost in that room. So I have these memories of like seeing like snow or winter and sometimes there'd be a Christmas tree or lights in the corner and like in that room. So it's a pretty, it's a, it's a really nice room. Yeah, I agree. I really like, I like the library as a whole. That's, yeah, the third floor things. of the library is, yeah. is awesome. Beautiful ceiling. Yeah. A lot of different places in the, in the library that can just kind of, you kind of just gravitate towards, in yeah. my opinion. Mm -hmm. um, I don't think we have any other questions. Um, so I just want to thank all of the attendees um for joining and asking all the questions that you did and i also really want to thank uh sarah rosenstock for being a part of this and taking some time out of her evening and kind of answering these questions for us so thank you sarah thank you guys thank, thank you and have a good rest of your night thank you